Okay, so hello everybody. Uh, welcome to our community hangouts. Um, so let's get started and with our first presentation. So um, Sergey will start talking about the migration to jQuery 3.5, um, the benefits uh, and the challenges of such migration. So um, Sergey, handing over to you. Thanks, Gabriel. Uh, hello, everyone. Let me probably share my screen here in a minute. OK, can you see the presentation now? Yeah, I can see it. Good, good. So, uh, yes, my name is Sergei Vashenko, and uh, uh, you may have heard my presentation on one of the previous hangout about uh, the PHP 8 compatibility where we were upgrading some, uh, talking about upgrades of some uh, PHP uh, dependencies, uh, composer dependencies, and then updating to uh, updating on the backend side. So this time we are going further with uh, updates for the libraries that Magento is using. And uh, in this case, uh, we, are, we are going to be talking about jQuery because that's one of the next libraries we would like to update in Magento or uh, Adobe Commerce. So uh, basically, the goal is uh, the goal that we have right now is pretty simple. We have quite old jQuery uh, library in Magento as of now. It is version 1.12.4 that was released in 2016 and we are going to update it to the latest jQuery version. As of now it is 3.6.0 that was released just a couple of months ago. This update is also uh, not so straightforward uh, and uh, what we are going to do in scope of this uh, first of all, we are going to work uh, in uh, 2.4 develop branch. We actually have already delivered some uh, uh, changes to the code related to jQuery upgrade there. So you can uh, watch in the 2.4 develop branch, you will see the updates that are going on. And right now we are working on the code base preparation. So as I will tell uh, earlier in this presentation, we are going to, uh, so the new version of jQuery has uh, quite a few uh, breaking changes comparing with uh, the uh, older version. That's uh, uh, expectable considering the, uh, the differences in versions. So the preparing code base is basically uh, updating the code we are using with jQuery to be compatible with, uh, with the latest version. Unfortunately, it is possible uh, to keep more to keep uh, almost all the code compatible with BOSS 1.12 uh, and, and 3.6. So that's fine as well. Uh, jQuery migrate uh, that uh, is really helpful for updating the for testing your code compatibility with the next jQuery version. Is also quite outdated in Magento right now, so we are going to update this as well. And uh, we are considering uh, some uh, introducing of some tests that will help to uh, to ensure the compatibility with the jQuery version, as well as help uh, you guys to update uh, your uh, customization and extensions to to the or prepare them for the new jQuery version. Apart from jQuery itself, we have lots of JS libraries uh, built in in Magento that uh, sometimes are not compatible with the latest jQuery version. So uh, updates of lots of JS libraries as Magento is also coming in scope of this, uh, or let's say as a dependency for this uh, jQuery upgrade. Uh, that's uh, something that 
uh, we are all also going to work in. And finally, uh, the jQuery itself and the plugins. Basically, uh, what you can see in the web, uh, in the libweb jQuery folder uh, is going to be updated to the latest version. So, uh, what what is uh, what this update is going to bring to us? Uh, uh, like the the benefits of the update or new features. Well, <laughs> for sure, there are performance improvements, bug fixes, are uh, uh, that uh, a lot of performance improvements and a lot of bug fixes that uh, have been done to jQuery since uh, the version that is in Magento, and also there are some additional good cool features that we can utilize. Well, first of all, uh, uh, the, uh, in the latest version of jQuery, we have the ability to uh, work with the proper promises. Uh, so there is a promises support for uh, deferreds. That also uh, that brings uh, the work with uh, jQuery uh, deferreds up to standards, but also brings a lot of backward and compatible changes about which we will talk. Uh, a bit later in this presentation. So basically, as a simple example, if previously sending the uh, Ajax, we had the ability to specify that the uh, done and fail function that uh, uh, that, for example, if in in the done function we had an exception, the fail is not going to be executed as. Uh, the fail function is executed on the, the on the error uh, of response from Ajax. In the new version, uh, this construction uh, turns to uh, using then and catch uh, methods. That uh, that is, uh, and in this case, if uh, the callback specified for then is throwing an exception will be able to actually handle that. There are a couple of additional improvements to handling exceptions as well. Uh, yeah, so here I'm just going to give you a slight overview of several uh, uh, several features and uh, several backwards and uh, incompatible changes that I think are uh, the uh, the most affecting and uh, as well as a short list of uh, a bit less impactful uh, backward and compatible changes and features at the end. And uh, if you guys think, if, if you have worked with the JavaScript, uh, the update for uh, jQuery for your JavaScript projects, Previously, and you faced some specific uh, change. Uh, uh, you see, you see some specific change challenge, and please uh, share the, this experience with us all. Uh, let uh, add add a comment to this meeting. So the second uh, feature is kind of simplifying the work with. Uh, Probably very frequently used jQuery get jQuery post functions that is allowing to pass the uh, uh, or the settings object with the uh, parameters for these functions instead of specifying them them seven arguments one by one. Well, in uh, in the latest jQuery, you can do both. You can either specify uh, the parameters or just pass them on alone as an object like uh, it is now uh, possible for Ajax, for example. So uh, jQuery collections uh, do support uh, the for uh, off loop uh, as of jQuery 3.4.0 uh, and uh, that can bring some uh, uh, some spice to code in with with jQuery. I think that's that's uh, a good feature as well. Uh, one additional method was introduced 
that uh, can be useful in case you need to uh, work with the uh, selectors uh, with the IDs or classes that have uh, uh, special characters that are special for CSS selectors. For example, in case uh, if ID of the element, or let's say the class of the element contains dots, uh, we could uh, use the escape selector uh, jQuery function to escape it. And in this case, uh, we'll be looking for a single ID with dots uh, or class with dots instead of uh, trying to find the element with ID ID and with two classes with and dots as it will be interpreted uh, using the first example on the left. Uh, one uh, thing that was improved is that uh, in in the latest jQuery we have the ability to uh, catch exception from the ready callback from the command uh, from the jQuery ready callback. Right. So previously uh, these errors uh, were not possible to catch and uh, basically they will be thrown and shown in the console. Uh, in the new version, there are even two ways to do this. First of all, uh, specifically for jQuery ready, ready exception, uh, a callback was introduced that can be specified uh, and that will be executed uh, each time when uh, the ready callback source an exception. And second, as ready is uh, a promise, you can use the fail uh, to uh, catch the error the fail callback. Uh, one more uh, uh, coding uh, sugar is uh, ability to uh, add remove classes and toggle cl classes as an array. Previously, we had to specify it as a string and now uh, we can pass arrays to these methods and that uh, will make the code looking better, I believe, just a little bit. So there are other features. Uh, for example, yeah, as I mentioned, the jQuery uh, ready promises formally supported. There are improvements on uh, animations. Nance and no model uh, support when so these these uh, parameters were ignored previously and uh, lots of others uh, as you can see on this page and probably that's not even the full list but with uh, these improvements with the fixes with the performance optimizations in the new jQuery there are actually uh, a lot of breaking changes that were introduced a lot of backward and compatible changes that have to be handled on our on our side if you would like to move to the new library version. And first of all, as I uh, mentioned, promises, uh, the signatures, uh, so the, the callback functions uh, have changed. And for uh, Ajax, that's I think that's the most common in uh, uh, Magento code base fr from my uh, uh, from my experience. So previously, when uh, calling an Ajax and specifying the callbacks, uh, we have used successor and complete uh, functions, and now uh, that's done, fail, and always. Uh, so while successor and, and complete uh, callback functions are not going to work in the new uh, jQuery version, the if these functions are defined in the settings object, so if you are passing an object to Ajax uh, instead of uh, calling the functions, you can still use uh, use these names as keys in in the object like successor and complete to specify your callbacks. Uh, there is a slight change on how jQuery process HTML. 
So uh, that's uh, that's also a part of uh, performance optimization. So previously, uh, I mean, in the current version that is in Magento, if uh, there is a short closing tag, like if div uh, is specified as one tag instead of two tags, uh, the jQuery will uh, transform it into two tags. So uh, this uh, example here, jQuery from uh, uh, div self-closing and span self-closing will result into the uh, the expected uh, div and then span. But in jQuery 3. since jQuery 3.5, this conversion is not taking place anymore. So uh, the default HTML behavior is for the tags that are not self-closing is uh, just percept them as an opening tag. In this case, we'll have opening tag, tag of div and opening tag of span. So that will result to two issues. Uh, so this uh, behavior can actually restore to the previous one using jQuery migrate 3.2.0. That's not in Magento as of now, but uh, we are going to add it soon. And specifying the jQuery unsafe restore legacy HTML pre-filter uh, option. Otherwise, all the tags except the tags that are shown on the screen should have uh, an opening and a closing tag in the HTML process by jQuery. This is a self-closing tag list. You can find it online anytime. And so moving forward, there is also a change on the data uh, data uh, key naming. So if the uh, kebab case, the case with uh, the uh, dashes used for defining the data, the new jQuery is actually uh, keeping the data in the camel case property. So while the data can be set, uh, set and retrieved using kebab case, if you will, if you are going to retrieve the data object, the uh, the pr uh, the property value is going to be stored in the camel case instead of kebab case. That's something to be uh, to be aware of. Uh, one backward incompatible change that also can be considered as a feature is uh, jQuery X does not remove hash from URLs anymore. So previously it stripped the, uh, the hash symbol and uh, right now uh, it will, pa it will uh, perform the call using the hash symbol as well. That can be used to uh, to pass some parameters after the hash, uh, but uh, it's it's a good idea to check if the server is ready uh, or if if the receiver of this Ajax call is ready to receive the hash uh, in the URL. If that uh, that is the case, so some small changes, but the changes that can affect uh, the execution uh, of the code is, uh, so if uh, there is a multiple select uh, that is assessed by jQuery where nothing is selected, uh, if you are going to take the value from that multiple select in jQuery 1, it will return null in jQuery 3.5. It will return 3.5.3.6. It will return uh, the empty array. So in case there are some checks later on, uh, it, it's worth to pay attention to this one. So one interesting change of behavior of hidden and visible. Uh, so the element since jQuery 3.5 
uh, 3.6, the element is considered visible even if height of width uh, is uh, zero, zero. So if, but but it's uh, it's still visible. So previously, if the element uh, was visible but had the height of zero, for example, that makes him physically invisible. The jQuery will also uh, consider it as invisible. One change to cross domain script requests. So previously, the scripts can could be requested cross domain with jQuery Ajax and get without the specified data type. Uh, currently, the data type has to be specified if this is done. And uh, jQuery get script is not affected because jQuery get script is actually uh, adding this uh, data type, type script uh, anyway. So, uh, also additional uh, return change. So, the empty set if you are going to uh, if you will call any of these methods uh, specified here the dimensional methods or offset methods on an empty set uh, uh, in the new jQuery the return is going to be undefined instead of now to consider it in the uh, later checks in the code there are some functions that were removed uh, that as functions and properties that are specified on uh, in uh, on the screen. Actually, if you go to documentation, there are quite easy replacements for uh, these functions and properties. Uh, but it uh, would be a very good idea to check your code and ensure these functions are not used uh, and to replace it according to jQuery recommendations. And there are other backward incompatible changes. Uh, the biggest one for sure, uh, uh, the jQuery dropped uh, Internet Explorer 6.8 uh, versions 6 to 8 support. So right now it's 9 plus. Uh, the change that probably will uh, impact the jQuery quality more than us, when jQuery runs in strict mode, uh, I don't think that will affect the clients of jQuery, but uh, I do believe that it affects the development of jQuery. And uh, yeah, so document ready handler, handlers are now asynchronous and lots of other smaller uh, backward incompatible changes. While not so many functions have been removed, there are lots of deprecated functions. So now on jQuery, and uh, you can see the list here. Uh, probably the most common from this list is bind in Magento that should be replaced with uh, like bind and bind should be replaced with on off. Uh, and uh, and other functions. All these functions also have quite uh, straightforward and uh, easy replacement that is provided by jQuery. So uh, there shouldn't be too many challenges replacing uh, these functions, and I uh, encourage you to to replace it, uh, even though they are not yet removed but uh, deprecated. Uh, but uh, that is going to uh, to make your project easier to upgrade later later on, and also. Uh, if uh, there is uh, one file with bind function, for example, in your project, this file probably is going to be used as, a, an, ex as an example later, and to, as a result, after some time, lots of binds will be used, and uh, lots of bind calls will, will be used, and if from the beginning, like early, uh, you are going to switch to new functions, that are uh, suggested by jQuery, then uh, that will that will be an, a good example for the future development as well. And in the end, you will need 
we will have to deal with less of uh, updates for the project transition to the next version. So the things that are useful to prepare for the new jQuery. So the first thing is to do use jQuery migrate while testing. And in the jQuery migrate, there is very nice documentation in GitHub repositories that can be viewed. Uh, that can be reviewed. Uh, that basically the documentation describes the uh, jQuery migrate variants, but it can be used to analyze your code as well. Uh, jQuery provides uh, uh, quite detailed upgrade guides uh, that can be find in, found on jQuery.com upgrade guide. There is an upgrade guide for uh, 3.0 and 3.5 versions. Uh, if there is no upgrade guide available, for, for example, uh, like in our case, we have to deal with uh, uh, changes introduced in 3.0, 3.1, 3.2, 3.3 and and so on until 3.6. So there there are also release blog posts for each uh, minor version released uh, on blog jQuery.com. Uh, it looks like uh, like if you if you will navigate just to blog jQuery.com, you will see straight away all the blog posts of for for all the releases describing the changes right there on the uh, left side on their blog. And finally. Uh, there is an API. There is a good API documentation for jQuery that also mentions all the changes. Like if you'll try to for, uh, look for function uh, that is removed or is deprecated in this new version, the API documentation will clearly state uh, that this function is deprecated or removed and uh, describe, uh, show the examples and describe the alternatives. Uh, how to implement it and also if you go to API documentation select deprecated uh, category there and there are labels for each uh, jQuery API uh, if you click on remove the label you will see all the removed uh, all, all the removed uh, functions and properties it's also helpful and finally watch uh, to for develop branch with updates and also uh, Stay tuned for our updates because as we will go through this uh, up upgrade process, uh, we are going to share. We would like to share information with you as frequently as possible. Thank you. Hi, Sergey. Uh, so I, I saw like a couple questions uh, on the topic. So the one is. Um, why migration to jQuery? The entire web has already switched to the native selectors. Uh, so, can you comment on this, please? Uh, why migrating to jQuery and the Actually, alternatives? Uh, yes, yeah, so the entire web has already switched to the native selectors. Well, that's. Uh, that's a good and interesting idea. We are not migrating to jQuery, we are upgrading uh, jQuery and uh, and as for the switching to the native selectors, I'm not exactly sure what they mean. I don't think it is going to uh, cover all the functionality that, that we use and switching to native is going to be uh, is going to be quite quite a big and backwards and compatible uh, tasks task for us, and I don't think there are too much benefits from that personally. That's that's a short answer, but we can discuss it if uh, you have the proposition on how jQuery can be replaced in Magento with something else. We are always open for discussion. Okay, cool. So, uh, in terms of why upgrading, uh, just a little bit to cover on that. So, we do have definitely concerns to the previous versions of the jQuery, including security one, and we must we are required to address security concerns. Uh, at least that. Uh, but again, uh, the other thing that we already mentioned today uh, on the upgrading front, removing entire jQuery from uh, Magento, it's, it's a big question. 
yeah by the way i see we have Igor minel on the call uh so Igor, can you comment on this please okay probably he doesn't hear us okay yep thank you sergey Any any other questions, guys? So I see some questions in the chat uh, from Alex. Uh, for jQuery, as it provides a lot of backward and compatible changes, why it's coming to 2.4 develop? Makes sense to do it in 2.5. Uh, well, uh, we are going to uh, simplify that update as uh, as as we can like providing the the probably some some tests from our side but uh, right now the the work that is uh, being done into for develop is uh, completely backward compatible we are updating uh, the code base in a way that it's compatible with uh, the old version and the new version the jquery up upgrade itself will uh, come later and uh, uh, i hope we'll we'll try to make you prepared for this upgrade so that it will not as backward as breaking for for you that's uh, my understanding on this, my point of view. The next one, does anybody know if new jQuery update bring any performance improvements in JS processing? Yeah, there are lots of performance imp improvements for specific functions and uh, uh, for jQuery uh, in general. And that is described in the documentation. Uh, I can, uh, if you are interested about that, uh, in more details, I can uh, follow up on this and show you some specific performance improvements. Some of the performance improvements, by the way, resulted in some all backwards and compatible changes as well, unfortunately. Uh, can return. That was more a joke. Sorry, I mean you okay. <laughs> you mentioned in, in in your list that it's can return on integer values. <laughs> that was a bit confusing. Like there is can return. I mean and, and can return. So it's uh, not really the strict type of declaration, but that's more a joke. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. These functions previously returned only integer values, the sizes, and now uh, jQuery is more precisely calculating. So can return an integer one and yeah, that's not a strict type. So you can get integer, can get float. OK. OK, guys, um, thank you very much, Sergey. Um, if no other questions, um, we will proceed. So um, now we're going to have um, Eugene talking about um, cloud managed services support in 243 and further. So Hello. Eugene, over to you. Thank you. Um, give me a second. Just um, guys, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll need to reconnect real quick. Just one second, OK? Because my Mac didn't want to share the screen. Oh, yeah, sure, no problem. Okay, I'm back. Thank you. Um, okay, so can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see it. Awesome. Yeah. So um, I'll try to be quick since we don't have too much time left. Um, but basically, what we wanted to talk today about um, is introduction of official support for cloud managed services. And uh, at this time, it's uh, we're talking about AWS, and um, 
I actually see some people who already probably seen this content on uh, the summit hackathon we did with AWS team. Um, so basically starting with our strategy, uh, we are trying to um, basically provide the most scalable platform supporting massive traffic for large organizations, large catalogs, and still um, if, you know, providing proper security and performance at the same time so that we don't make those kind of trade-offs that we actually need you know, to sacrifice performance uh, to host bigger catalogs or vice versa. So uh, we're trying to find solution basically which will provide best performance at the same time um, with whatever catalog or uh, other settings you, you may want to configure inside your, inside your Magento. And finally, um, we really want uh, our partners and customers to be able to go live really quick and um, easily without, um, I would say, spending too much time on figuring out the infrastructure part and how to make the store performant. And basically, um, over time, we were getting lots of questions on um, when we will start supporting services uh, which are kind of latest and greatest um, on the cloud provider side. Uh, so we worked with AWS very closely to uh, basically uh, introduce official support into Magento for the services you see on the screen. So we basically took um, each service we are using like database, Elasticsearch, Redis and others and selected one <clears throat> one of the managed services on AWS site, which we find fits best for the purpose. Um, so um, MariahDB, MySQL will go to Aurora. Basically, Elasticsearch remains being Elasticsearch, uh, but it's uh, a managed one. Elastic Cache is going to kind of replace Redis, or I mean not replace, but basically uh, be an alternative to Redis. Um, AWS recently released um, managed RabbitMQ, which wasn't available before, which is great because previously we had only the SQS option and that required actual additional development in Magento. Uh, so RabbitMQ basically works natively and uh, so far we didn't find any issues and definitely S3 for some media storage, some static content and things like that. So. Lots of these things were used uh, previously by some partners and customers, uh, but we never supported it officially, meaning, you know, whatever issues may, be, may have been happening there, uh, we couldn't really look into that and, and help much. But now we basically, um, we, within the last few versions, 2.4.2, we added S3, and 2.4.3, we are adding the rest of, of these uh, services. We are trying to basically uh, get to a point when we can confidently say that the services are supported and you can build your stack on top of them. And uh, definitely it may take some time to kind of polish everything and make sure that, you know, in production it's performing the way we expect and actually kind of battle test all of the services. Uh, but testing each one of these, we basically um, seeing good improvements here and there in terms of performance stability, you get some added benefits like auto scaling for most of them. Um, you know, as you know, in our cloud, we have the tier separations um, option where basically you have like separate web server, server and like services separately. So basically with introduction of, of these like native services, you, you know, architecture like that would look pretty much the same, but with separation by design because you cannot just put a word on your EC2 instance, right? Um, file system, which is more redundant uh, and, you know, S3 is probably the only uh, service out there uh, which can even do the cross-region uh, backups and recovery. So, and finally, the easier tech stack upgrade. So, as you know, like tech stack upgrades are always complex, especially if we're talking about something like upgrading databases or whatever like that. And, uh, you know, you also need to align it with like your uh, Linux or whatever you're using as your operation system. And uh, essentially, you know, it was always hard to upgrade these things. So now as these things can be separated completely and can be out of the web server location, basically they can all be 
uh, managed and updated independently, which is cool. So um, if talking about the timeline and when things become available, um, S3 basically is in 242. So you probably have the chance to actually look at it, or at least there were a few presentations about it from our team. So you may have heard that it's there. Um, not sure if you had time to actually try it, but but it's there. In 243, we're adding a few upgrades to S3 implementation, basically uh, based on the, some feedback we got and uh, some additional like tech depth we had. So 243 has more polished S3 integration with some additional performance improvements and some other uh, stabilization things. Also in 243, we were basically taking 243 and testing against all the managed services on the list here. Um, we can prove now that basically all of them work. Um, they perform, they pretty much are stable for to be used with Magento. Um, so there are a few things basically that are still to be resolved. Um, as you may understand, the services are often a little bit behind on the service versions. So, for example, Aurora doesn't support MySQL 8 at this point yet, um, but luckily we have kind of support for earlier versions and, um, you know, things like that. But basically, um, we've tested out all of this and are also building like automation now to actually prove that these things work continuously. So, you know, either it will be like pull request or some overnight builds. Uh, it's still to be to be designed, um, but um, basically the core application will now continuously be uh, validated against the services and making sure it works. I guess the important part to, to the audience here is what the impacts to future releases and extensions that we have. So, you know, it's kind of up to you if you want to, to use those or not. Um, we still um, retain all the previous options we had, like just hosting, for example, MySQL or Redis or Elasticsearch, like on your instances, um, or you can go with managed services. But for future releases, there are a few impacts, basically. So um, there is additional compatibility testing scope. Uh, so, you know, if you're contributing pull requests or contributing code to Magento or uh you know just in looking at some like compatibility challenges uh, so basically um we're now adding additional testing for that so for example as i said like mysql 8 is not supported yet in aurora and it would mean that you know the implementation if something is being done basically needs to work with aurora as well it's not uh it's not uh, possible anymore to, to do it just for, for MySQL or MariaDB. We'll actually need to be uh, consistently making sure things like managed services work. It's more on our side uh, than on your side um, because we basically will be having those automation testing in place, uh, but uh, it's definitely like additional scope of testing for us. So um, we may maintain compatibility with multiple versions of services. So, you know, for example, in like 2.4x versions, we would say, you know, we support MySQL 8 only, uh, but it's not the case anymore. We actually need to uh, focus on support in Aurora as well. So it would be kind of dual support for, for services, saying we support one and another one, um, and we'll continuously kind of upgrade those versions. So test coverage for technical stack and compatibility. Um, as I mentioned, um, it will be part of our development practices. And in fact, the extensions. Um, so there are a few things to keep in mind. If you're heavily relying on something like Elasticsearch in your extensions or um, you know, similar, similar uh, things like Elasticsearch plugins, you know, there may be some um, compatibility challenges. So managed services, they are definitely having lots of benefits, you know, like performance, as we discussed, scalability, auto scale, and easier upgrades, all of that. But at the same time, all of these benefits come with some cost. And basically that cost is uh, some challenges with availability of like plugins or similar things in different services. So for example, if you look at the Elasticsearch plugin list on um, managed Elasticsearch, it will be shorter than what you would expect, you know, to see from a hosted Elasticsearch. So when you're like developing extensions for your projects or just for bigger audience to kind of like 
uh, you know, uh, sell those extensions, it's good to keep in mind uh, that not everything is compatible with managed services. And uh, depending on what you're developing it for or for, for what architecture, uh, there are things to, to look at. And yeah, finally, I guess it's just a general recommendation, but it would be good to make sure like any extensions or customizations developed are compatible with managed services because customers, once they realize the Sorry, it's my my um, customers. Once they realize the the benefits of these things, they will be asking you probably to move them to the managed services, you know, if, and asking if they can utilize those. So basically, it's important to keep those in mind as well. Um, I guess in short, in short, that's it. Um, if you guys have questions, please let me know. Yeah. Um, thanks, Eugene. Um, there is one question from Alex. Um, I'll just read it here. Um, so what's the difference between the current AWS Elasticsearch compatibility? You can set a uh, remote Elasticsearch service um, in AWS service and the new one in the Magento 243. So it's a good question. So basically, as I said, you know, we not always were actually introducing changes, but we were mainly making sure things work. So for database, for example, we had to make changes because there were things that were not compatible with Aurora. So there are changes for database compatibility. For Elasticsearch specifically, it worked as is. Uh, so there were no changes in Elasticsearch except that we made sure that we are not using any kind of plugins by default that are not compatible that the versions align that we have a proper automation in place to kind of make sure the quality of of our integration stays intact over time and similar things so the support was like interesting because it's not about like huge amount of code contributed but about huge amount of processes aligned and like automation and testing done and similar things so we're basically you know sure we can say now we kind of officially support those starting to force three but doesn't necessarily mean we introduced a lot ton of code there i see um i see your alex you raised your hand yeah thank you hello can you hear me Yep, yeah. yeah, thank you for a nice presentation. It's really interesting because AWS uh, just like uh, maybe just the future of the cloud and the Magenta from my point of view, it's very powerful servers. But I have two questions related to the instance types. So uh, you, took, you presented the idea of auto-scaling and uh, I'm worried about uh, the instance type you will suggest for customers. So what's uh, can you say about this? Yeah, so we are still we are still documenting all of that because different different uh, services basically depending on what they do they need different instance types. So in in previous architecture, basically we were having two instance types that were like C service and M service for uh, web and was other services respectively. But in new uh, world when we get this Aurora's and everything else, there may be some, you know, R service involved or some T service involved here and there, because basically not all services need to be, you know, huge by default. And uh, they may be, you know, like in percentage of load, I would say, you know, they can be consuming less resources than the others. So I, I cannot tell you right now, I guess the exact instance types, uh, it's something that needs to be tested depending on what exactly uh, what exactly uh, you're trying to implement, but we will have some recommendations over time. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. And I have one more question about the Elasticsearch service. Uh, you know that it uh, provides a lot of security settings, and uh, I wonder if you will provide uh, any maybe instructions how to set up this Elasticsearch service um, just according to the base Magento installation. Um, yeah, it will be really nice. And of course, if you will provide any uh, think uh, like uh, maybe easy tools for configure the AWS environment, it will be really great because the AWS provides a lot of stuff uh, from the CLI. So yeah, <laughs> 
Do you have any plans for CLI uh, and AWS Elastic Service, Elastic Source Service configuration? Yeah, sure. Uh, so um, EC Tools does support it already. It was released as part of the last release, so we didn't put that kind of a, any you know um, big notice about that anywhere yet because you know we're still polishing things. But EC tools had some uh, incompatibilities basically because um, compared to the local installation, we needed to like pass over the endpoints and like credentials and all that other stuff. So we fixed all of that and actually EC tools now supports it. So there is, uh, I would say, no official flow documented yet how to set it up, but it already supports it and documentation is being kind of in progress. As we speak. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant news because AWS uh, just like a great service for the Magenta. Uh, uh, tested on my experience, yeah. So looking forward for your documentation. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. And uh, yeah, just 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 to add to that, on on setting up the 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 services, basically, uh, the team is working now on actual documentation how to do on-prem installation because you know that's basically where we we are starting from. Uh, to, to get more data on uh, basically how, how things work. And once things are polished, you know, we, we will be using like EC tools documentation. But I mean, if you if you want to look into what was done in last release, as you know, EC tools is open source, so you, you can always look at that even before the official announcement. Thank you. Sure. Nice. Um... Any other questions, guys? I don't see anything in the chat. I just want to add a little bit on, uh, on the open source. Uh, so as you know, like a 243 uh, two release is going uh, public beta soon. I believe early uh, June uh, we will have public beta for 243, so you will be able to try out all this nice stuff which we were talking about. So but please keep watching the uh, communication and updates. Also, we have schedule for the public beta and EAP on our DevDocs website. So if you're interested to participate, just shoot us an email and we will get you onboarded. Yep, and you can always find us on Cloud Slack, as you all know. So we're pretty active there. So in case something interesting comes up, just find us there. Yeah, really interesting. Thank you so much for this update. It's really great. Looking forward for the upcoming release. Cool. Sounds good. Okay, guys. Um, if no other questions, then I think we can wrap up. Um, thanks, Eugene, for the presentation. It was very nice. And thanks, everybody, for joining us. I uh, really appreciate it and hope you guys have a nice day. Thank you, guys. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye.